Just simply by clicking this button on my website, I can get a reverse shell on your system. Protocol handlers are an important component of how internet and web applications communicate with each other, but that means just, just like everything else, we can take advantage of it. So if you ever clicked on a link on a website and it opened up in a specific app or program instead of in your browser, so that's thanks to protocol handlers. The question is, is how do hackers like me use it against regular people? Basically, a protocol handler is a small piece of software that allows your computer to recognize certain types of links and know which program to open them with. For example, if you were to click on the mail to link, your computer knows to open your default email program so you can compose a message. Another one that you might be familiar with is your Chrome setting protocol. If you navigate to your search bar and type Chrome settings, you'll be able to view those from there as well. However, there are some security risks that are associated with these protocol handlers. And well, that's exactly why you're here, isn't it? Okay, so while we are talking about the Chrome protocol handlers, I thought it would be good to bring this up. If you do go to the Chrome About protocol handler, it'll give you a list of all the different URLs that you can use up there. And there are an incredible amount of them and each one of these has an insane amount of information in them. I will probably do a separate video where I'm gonna go through and kind of show you the good things that you can find in there with the, with the worthwhile things. And then if you go down to the bottom, this is actually kind of funny. They actually added some that are just for debugging. So they cause a bunch of different kinds of errors and crashes, whatever. And some of them have got funny names, induce browser check for reels. But yeah, basically if you were to take something like this one, you know, the hang and you place it up here and run it, it'll just make it constantly load over here for a certain amount of time. I think it's like 10 or 15 seconds if I remember correctly, but it's just worth checking out, maybe looking into, you can definitely learn a lot while you're in here. Okay, so starting off, the first thing that I'm gonna do is show you guys how to make your own protocol handler like I have here, PS. So what we can do now is I can actually pipe in commands to here. So I can just say echo hi, it'll ask me, do I wanna open in a PowerShell window, run it, and then it'll execute the PowerShell. So the easiest way to illustrate the concept that I just showed you is for us to make our own protocol handler like in the example before this, when we use the echo hi command. In order to do that, we have to come into the registry editor. You wanna to go to H key classes root, right click on it, hit new and make a key. Now you wanna make this key called PS. I've already done this, so I'm just gonna scroll down to it real quick. All right, so now once we are down here, you wanna click on the key that you just made. Now inside of there, you wanna double click on the default protocol and we want to change it. We want it to be URL colon PS, which is also the name of our key, and then protocol, hit okay. Now you want to right click, hit new, make a new string value. And for the string value, you want to make it URL protocol, just like you see here. Now right click on PS, make a new key and call it shell. Right click on shell, make a new key and call it open. Do that again one more time, and then we'll have the command. Now inside the command, this is where things get kind of interesting. Okay, so the one thing you guys need to understand about the command that we do have inside of that registry key value is that command is how we process the input that we get from the browser. So in a perfect world, that registry key value would just be calling PowerShell, Windows hidden, uh, execution policy bypass, and then it would pass percent one here at the end. Percent one, is whatever we get from the browser window. Now the issue with that is whenever you pass something through the browser, it URL encodes it. So for those you don't know, uh, URL encoding is what you always see in uh, the search bar. You'll have percent %20 and a percent %26 instead of something like a space and an ampersand. So whenever we pass our command through the browser, it URL encodes it, so that way there is also a percent %20 between echo and high. That won't work. So we can't just pass percent %1 straight to PowerShell. Instead, we need to uh, convert that data, the URL encoded characters, to their AC value. So I've made this function right here that does that. We're not gonna go deep into it here, but I've saved this file into the C 
temp directory, myhandler.ps1. So now, whenever we take something from the browser, we will then pass it into the PS1 file. It will encode it properly and then pass it to PowerShell and execute it. So the question becomes, what are the practical applications and how easy is it to implement an attack like this? The practical applications themselves are limitless. You saw just by pressing a button on my website, it executed PowerShell on my system. And I could have ran that in the background as well. How easy is it to implement an attack like this? It is disgustingly easy. I have my basic HTML drawing up the page, but all it takes is this little script block right here that will call to a location that's referencing your protocol handler or the one that we just made today. Now you might be asking yourself, does that mean that this button right here will only work if you have my custom protocol handler on your system? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. If you were to go back through this video, follow the steps exactly as I did, when you press this button, it would work for you as well but it would not work for someone that doesn't have my custom uh, protocol handler on their system. That doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of network protocol handlers because what I can tell you is that both the Chrome and file protocol handlers can be abused and used to execute code on a target system from something like a website that referenced those protocol handlers. Now that will be a video for another time, something we won't be covering today. Uh, today's video can honestly be splintered in a bunch of different videos and that is something I'm going to be looking into. If there's something specific that you guys wanna see covered more in detail, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. But overall, this is a really cool attack vector that I've really just fully started exploring and I'm kind of excited to see what everybody else is able to do or what they're able to pull off. Either way, remember, I am Jacoby. My crime is that of curiosity. And yeah, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. Till next time.